The reason I love making videos about food is because food tells the story of culture. And just recently, I was doing some genealogy on MyHeritage.com when I discovered an ethnic group in Poland called Kashubians, and their culture is rich. In fact, there is a certain defining point to Kashubians within Poland, as the saying goes. You can't have Kashubians without Poland, and you wouldn't have Poland without Kashubians. So I spent some time colorizing their photos, admiring their folk culture, decided that I needed to try their food. So here we are on the Hell Peninsula, where we will travel to the very end and discover all of their unique flavors. Kashubians are mostly found throughout northern Poland and celebrate unique customs, their own official language, and of course food. I chose to learn about them on the Hell Peninsula as I've been told their people have a long-standing history here. Frankly speaking, a sandbar in the Baltic seems like an unusual place to call home. So we're here in Kuznica. This is a small town that's bordered by water on both sides. You've got the Bay of Put and the Baltic Sea. Naturally, they serve fish here, and that is a tourist pastime that's been going on for decades. I've been proposed several fish that actually I don't know the name of in English, but there is torbat, tak, torbat, okom, chyba, okom, aha, i flandra, i flandra, okay. And apparently, this is as local as it gets. It's heavy fried, but it's going to be delicious. I'm choosing turbot. And here we have it, turbot. This is special not only because it's presented on a beautiful Kashubian dish, but it was caught today. Rarely do we get to eat fish that fresh. In fact, the owner of this restaurant said that it's harder and harder with the years to come by fresh fish, even in this part of Poland. So, it's an opportunity that I savor. Let's try it out. Look at that, I just want to open up the breading to give you guys an appreciation for what a beautiful fish this is. And if you saw a picture of this fish, you would never guess that it's such a delicacy. It's kind of an ugly fish, honestly. Yeah, all right. So you just kind of take the meat right off the bones there. And... Wow. It's a rich, buttery flavor to it. This is fabulous. There is certainly a discernible difference between fish that you buy frozen and fish that was taken right out of the sea, plopped right onto your plate, within a mere matter of hours. And you'll get a good look at the bone of this fish. Check that out. Now, normally I wouldn't put emphasis on the skeleton of the fish, but in fact, this is a topic that leads us to our next destination. I'd like to share a thought. Living in my ancestors' land has been a privilege, not only because I've learned about my own heritage, but because I've had the chance to discover new cultures within Poland, such as the Kashubians. This would not have been possible without the sponsor of today's film, My Heritage, the number one family history service in Europe, the site that puts 18 plus billion records at your fingertips. My heritage is a genealogist's dream come true. And the way I first discovered this service is actually deeply personal. When I became interested in genealogy, my own mother insisted that I use my heritage to expand my horizons. I was able to make new discoveries with their database of archival records. For example, I found this priceless ship record documenting my great-grandmother's immigration to the United States of America. And with my newly found knowledge, I decided to start a multi-generational family tree, a roadmap to understanding my family story and where we're from. It seems every time I log in, I'm shocked by something new. This service also has outstanding photo tools. You simply build your photo library, and from there, you can recover damaged photos with the enhance feature and bring them to life by colorizing them or adding animation. That's right, you can see your long-lost ancestors move. 
My point is that if you'd like to discover your own family history and possibly go on an adventure like the one that uh, I have had today, MyHeritage is the place to start. It's easy, just sign up for a 14-day free trial and enjoy all the amazing features MyHeritage has to offer. If you decide to continue your subscription, you'll get a 50% discount. Just click the link in the description below. Now, back to the Kashubian food. Traveling through this peninsula is surreal. It changed hands so many times over the years that there is an eclectic mix of history, a fact you might overlook if you're easily distracted by kite surfers. Moving forward in our peninsula tour, we are in Yasharnia to try some rather unique Kashubian food. In Yasharnia, I was greeted by a Kashubian chef named Piotr, who is something of a local legend, as he became known across Poland for his appearances on TV as a culinary master. Słuchajcie, to to jest dla turystów. To jedzą u nas turyści, a my będziemy jeść to. Ja szybszy to teraz. Co? Naprawdę? Zjemy kości? Będziemy jeść kości. Okej. Okay. It's the first time in my life I'm gonna eat fish bones. W kuchni kaszubskiej, szczególnie w kuchni Kaszub Północnych, która była kuchnią w miarę ubogą, szczególnie tutaj na Półwyspie, gdzie nie było hodowli, nie było pól uprawnych, Ludzie starali się zużywać wszystko to, co pozyskają. Mięso ryb było sprzedawane, a ości i wnętrzności tych ryb były przez miejscowych oprawiane. Znaleźli sobie metody kulinarne. Pokażę wam taką ciekawostkę. Mianowicie jednym z bardziej fantastycznych dań na mojej rodzimej kuchni jest właśnie taka kuchnia resztkowa, czyli wątróbki z dorsza. Słuchajcie, kuchnia kaszubska, kuchnia rodzima może również pięknie wyglądać. To nie jest fine dining, to jest fun dining. Piotr actually developed much of his skill as a culinary artist during his time as a sailor. In fact, he visited every continent except Australia. So when Piotr, the master chef, invited us back into his kitchen, you know, everything was very elegant and I was excited for the behind the scenes. But then I saw this barrel dead fish, you know? And I had two reactions. Just honestly, I was a little bit grossed out when I saw it. I thought, are we going to eat that? But uh, on the other hand, I recalled the childhood story from my cousin Jesse, who had a Polish friend named Monica, that apparently always had a barrel like this of dead fish in her home. And now I'm just wondering, was Monica Kashubian, perhaps? Now it's time to try a rather adventurous course of Kashubian food. We are starting off with cod liver before we move into the more extreme dishes. Jakieś porada? Połączenie słodkiego ze słonym to taki francuski y, komplet foie gras z soternem. Okay. I spróbuj jak, jak wygląda foie gras po kaszubsku. Y, gęsie wątróbki, że można było zjeść, trzeba je przetrzeć przez sito, bo są bardzo twarde. A te? Spróbuj. Delikatne. So it smells like just barely fishy. If I didn't know any better, I could mistake this for another meat. When I sliced into it, it was totally tender. Very delicate. Wow. It has like almost a silky texture to it. It, it goes down very, very easily. You know, this would be a good dish to start people who claim that they don't like fish, right? Let's say your mom doesn't like fish. Feed them cod liver. She'll think that she is eating a kind of, you know, delicate meat with a little bit of a fish aftertaste. This is pretty good Kashubian food. <laughs> so I was going to introduce the next dish, you know, I thought it was the anchovies. Apparently that's dessert here. <laughs> so we're moving on to the um, fillet of salmon bones. I have to say, this is the weirdest thing. You know, you never want to get a fish bone in your throat. That's like the, the worst idea ever. 
Uh, that's part of the reason a lot of people don't like fish. And yet, we're going to eat fish bone. How do you do this? Okay. Bierzemy sztućce. Dobrze. Jestem leworęczny, więc... Okay. To odkładamy. <laughs> Dobra. Zostawiamy sobie widelec. Widelec będzie służył do warzyw. Aha. Tak? Możesz spróbować. To jest chyba... Warzywko. Mm -hmm. Odkładamy. Sprzęt. Grałeś no, z naszą wow, harmonikę ustną. O oh, man. <laughs> ok. Robisz to w ten sposób. Zobacz, no. to jest czyste. I Co? suwamy. Ok. A czy powinny naprawdę jeszcze kości, czy...? Hmm. Jeżeli są kości, to je wyjmujemy. Ok. It's good that we clarify. I thought I was supposed to eat the fish bone. This is interesting because people basically made this food out of the desperation that there wasn't a lot of food available here on this peninsula. And yet, well, at least the modern version, the flavor is incredible. There's actually a little bit of a spicy zest going on. Some Polish families, you recall eating pierogi, right? As your uh, childhood food. Piotrek recalls salmon bone feel it. It's interesting. I mean, Poland is really a pretty diverse place in that regard. A lot of little subcultures. I see that... Oh! I want to have good manners here in front of the camera and everything, but... Show me, maybe, because I don't have this problem. You thought you would have any fish or fish? No, no. The rest. We put it on the fire. We eat. And after the salt, po pierwszym słonym smaku będziesz mógł e, poczuć smak helu, smak prawdziwych kaszów. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I'm all about embracing new culture. This is Kashubian culture. And so with that... Wow. It's better than I expected. Very intense. Like... Tam nie ma imbir? Jest. Jest imbir. No, you can feel it. Wow, okay. Oh, That's quite okay. okay. Ryan, jeden z moich gości powiedział, że podczas podróży po świecie jadł bardzo ekstremalne danie Aha. i był to burger z aligatora. Ale po wyjściu z mojej restauracji powiedział, że nie, nie burger z aligatora. Lody ze śledzia. To będą lody ze śledzia z miodem i czerwonym pieprzem. Oh. You know, I don't know how else to introduce it. It's ice cream with marinated fish inside, so I'm very skeptical. But uh, it pays to be open-minded, right? Let's do the smell test first. Neutral. It's probably a good thing. Nie trzeba. Wiesz co, te pieprz uratowało wszystko. <laughs> Because at first... Posłuchaj, na początek było taki smak lody, jest wszystko w porządku. Wtedy nagle taki kop ryba, a ja się brzydzę i wtedy nagle pieprz. <laughs> so you could forget about the, the fish because the, the, <laughs> the pepper saves it. And then it's sweet from the honey. That's weird. That is a culinary roller coaster. No other way to describe it. This visit to Jaszczarnia was epic. I know that I will come here again, eat time and again, and uh, I thank our host for having us. So now, let's move on to hell. I left Jaszczarnia with a full stomach and a happy heart, making my way to the city of hell, where I would enjoy the scenic port for my final feast. So here we are, the end of the peninsula, Hell Poland, a beautiful town that features a mixture of fishing culture, and military, but we are here to embrace the Kashubian side. And with that, we have herring, Kashubian herring, and fish soup. So if you've been watching Cult America for a while, you might realize that Poland indeed serves herring from the mountains to the sea, from the south to the north. And from what I gather, Kashubian style is going to be filled with flavor, tomato sauce. There's a zest of uh, vinegar. I think this is going to be good. It's wonderful. It's 
look at how the presentation is here. It's been plated with such elegance. Wow. Now fish soup is another classic. You can find this in so many varieties across the northern region of Poland. You'll also find it in the lake regions, of course. And this take with the tomato sauce is certainly my favorite. You've got cod here, you've got a little shrimp to zest it up. And uh, oftentimes is the case that this is the closest thing within Polish food that you can find to a spicy experience. This was really something wonderful. The herring was served with such elegance, such grace that even if you'd otherwise be squeamish about eating fish in that format, this could be a wonderful gateway. Now the fish soup, this is my favorite variation, the tomato soup, but I didn't expect that the cream would kind of calm it down, make it into a comforting home-style dish. Altogether, this has been a fantastic opportunity to see the more fancy restaurant side of Kashubian culture. You know, this was truly a precious experience. Traveling the entirety of the Hell Peninsula, I discovered a culture that I previously didn't really know existed. Through their food, I now feel that I have a much deeper understanding and appreciation for them. So thank you, Kashubians, for hosting me today. And thank you, my heritage, for sponsoring this film. Now it's time for me to take my lovely bride and walk off into the sunset. As you hit the subscribe button, of course. <laughs>